Good morning, everybody. Today is Tuesday, September 12th, 2023. And my name is Mike Zornick, and we're back here on the Exorcism JavaScript track. And I believe today we are going to be learning conditionals and comparisons, and then eventually working on the vehicle purchase exercise. So let's jump right in and look at conditionals. Uh, a common way to conditionally execute logic in JavaScript is the if statement. It consists of the if keyword, a condition wrapped, wrapped in round brackets, and a code block wrapped in curly brackets. The code block will only be executed if the condition evaluates to true. Pretty standard. Uh, it can be used standalone or combined with the else keyword uh, to nest another condition into the else statement. Uh, you can use else if. Nothing too crazy there. And then uh, we'll go back and look at comparisons. In JavaScript, numbers can be compared using the following relational and equality operators. Greater than, greater than or equals, less than, less than or equals, strict equals, and non-strict equals. The result of the comparison is always a Boolean value, so either true or false. One is less than three, two, is absolutely not equal to two <laughs> equals false. One equals 1.0 does equal true. Love that. Uh, all numbers are floating points, so this is a different syntax for the exact same value. Love that. And when I say, by, and by love that, I mean I hate that. But anyway, uh, <laughs> comparing strings. In JavaScript, the comparison operator all above can also be used to compare strings. In that case, a dictionary lexi lexicographical order is applied. You can find the list of uh, exact order for all characters here. So apple is greater than pear. A is less than above. A absolutely equals capital A is false. Strict equality. Uh, you might wonder about the three equal signs for checking equality in JavaScript. Rep triple equals uh, represents the check for strict equality, which means that no type conversion is performed and values of a different types are always unequal like that. I like that because, you know, the problem is, of course, is that, you know, string three, I think equals three <laughs> in this. So let me, uh, let me just verify that. Um, so yeah, so like one equals one is true. String one equals one is true. Absolutely love that. <laughs> and then equals that'll be, uh, that'll be false. Okay. Just so we can verify. Um, all right, strict equality. Uh, one triple equals one n. What's the one n for? The value on the left is has a type number. The value on the right has a uh, type big int. One n. Do they teach us what big int? One n. Has type number the value on the right is big end. I don't think they really ever taught us big end. Uh, big end. JavaScript reference. A big int value represents numeric values which are too large to be represented by the number primitive. Okay. I guess that's how you can you can actually represent it in code with like just the little end character at the end. Interesting. Okay. Well, today we learned. Uh, using triple equals and bang, double equals is the recommended way for checking equality in JavaScript. There's also equals equals and bang equals, which represents checking for loose equality. You should avoid using it. You avoid it because it'll apply implicit type conversion before performing the comparison. The outcome in these cases are hard to predict and sometimes not what you would expect. Zero equals false true. Love that. All right, uh, so with all that said, let's get into the vehicle purchase exercise. So I'm gonna download the exercise and I'm going to npm install. And while that is working, we can read the introduction. In this exercise, you will write some code to help you prepare to buy a vehicle. You have three tasks, one is to determine if you will be, if you will need to get a license, one to help you choose between two vehicles, and one to estimate the acceptable price of a used vehicle. 
Hello, lawn cutting people. <laughs> so I have the project open here. Um, I'm gonna make this a tiny bit smaller. Uh, so we were going to be working on number one, a determine if your driver's license, license. We got the spelling error. Uh, determine if you will need a driver's license. Some kinds of vehicles require a driver's license to operate them. Assume only the kinds car tr and truck require a license. Everything else can be operated without a license. Implement needs license kind. Let's take a uh, car and bike. Okay. So we'll say if uh, uh, we got to turn off the uh, we got to turn off the, uh, the co-pilot because we uh, we need to do this ourselves. So we're gonna do triple equals uh, kind, what am I looking for? Car and truck, car. I think I should use single quotes. I think the idea is that, or not and, or, can you just say or, or you have to use the brackets? No, you have to use the brackets. Uh, kind, triple equals, truck. Actually, you don't even need to, uh, well, I'll I'll do this as a return true um, else return false. I mean, you could just return the results of this boolean check. Uh, yeah, you could just do that normally. I should probably do a PR to fix these typos. Um, I'll do it as an if statement to return because that's the whole point of the exercise is to play around with if statements. So, uh, I don't know, we'll just do that. Uh, choose between two potential vehicles to buy. You evaluate your options of available vehicles. You manage to narrow it down to two options, but you need to help making the final decision for that implement the function choose vehicle option one, option two. That takes two vehicles as arguments and returns a decision that includes the option that comes first in dictionary order. Okay, so given these two, it would ret return Toyota. Given these two, it would return uh, Beetle. Okay. Um, so you could say uh, if. Uh, option one is greater than option two then return option one else return option two looks like it passes choose vehicle is not uh we need to change our greater than less than maybe no Choose vehicle. What don't you like about this? Debug a test. Oh, you need to say is clearly the better choice. I should read the directions. Um, is clearly the better choice. Okay. So let's do that. Let's. Uh, I think we can do it with. Um, uh, what is it? Is it like that? I think that's the format for a a uh, interpreter in a, a, a an interpreted string. Um, maybe no. What uh? How's this failing now? Oh, I messed up the. Yeah, I think it is the. <laughs> not that operator. Less than. All right, that looks good now. Uh, tests are green. Good. All right, now we gotta do number three. Calculate an estimation for the price of a used vehicle now that you've 
uh, you now that you made your decision, you have made, you made your decision. You want to make sure you get a fair price for at the dealership. Good luck with that. Uh, since you are interested in buying a used vehicle, the price depends on how old the vehicle is. For a rough estimate, assume if the vehicle is less than three years old, it cost 80% of the original price it had when it was brand new. If it is more than 10 years old, it costs 50%. If the vehicle is less than three years old, but not older than 10, it costs 70% of the original price. Well, okay. Uh, implement original price, age, and that uses the function if else. Okay. All right. So let's read this uh, logic again. For a rough estimate, if the vehicle is less than three years old, so like if uh, age, and we'll assume age is coming in as a um, a uh, number. Um, if is three years old, it cost eighty percent of the original price. So that would be return original price times uh, zero point eighty. Um, else, if what's the next one? Else, if if it is more than 10 years old, it costs age is more than 10 years old. It costs return original price times uh, 50%. And then if it is less than three, if it's greater than 10, that we, we can just do an else because if it's between three and ten, then it'll always be return original price times 0 0.70. And let's look at our tests. They all pass. Uh, cool. I think that's it. All right, let's uh, exorcism submit this. Submit vehicle purchase. Let's take a look at the interwebs. Oh, we've got a robot recommendation. I think that's our first one. So instead of creating an if block, leverage the Boolean value directly. Yeah, um, okay, I'll do that. I mean, we kind of knew that. We mentioned it in uh, our work here, but I thought maybe it would want. I thought maybe it would want the uh, the logic, not the logic, it would want us to use an if statement, but that's fine. Oh, we've still got robots. Uh, cool, what's the next robot? Uh, your code contains some unnecessary duplication. Think about ways to avoid that by first deciding for an option and then building up the final result. Um. I mean, yeah, it's got a little duplication there, but I don't know. Um, all right, we'll, we'll resolve that. So one way we could resolve that is by saying, um, we could say something like const uh, chosen uh, I'll say, I don't want to say chosen vehicle. I'll just say vehicle. V vehicle equals, and then that'll be like uh, if, I think we can write it like this, where it's like, um, then it'll be option one, otherwise it'll be option two. And that'll grab the vehicle, and then we can just say vehicle in the return, and we don't need to use an if block. But like the whole point of the lot, the whole point of the exercise was to learn if block. So it seems a little. If that's the thing it was complaining about, our tests are still green, right? Yeah. All right, let's upload another iteration and see what the robots have to say.
Nice, that's an early return used. An early return. For the purpose of the concept that this exercise substitutes cell by using an else statement. Is it, it's complaining that I don't have an else in here? All right, well, I've lost, uh, I have lost patience with uh, the robots, so <laughs> I'm going to go and mark this as done. And uh, we're going to take a look at the other community res uh, results. So we've learned conditionals and comparisons. I'm going to return to the exercise. And uh, is there anything under Dig Deeper? No. Is there anything in community solutions that I want to see? Uh, yeah, this is fancy. This is this is nice, like actually declaring vehicles with licenses and then validating it. Like that's solid, and I like that it's all caps too. Um, they did that all in line, which is terse, but not as readable, I think, as mine. Um, and then this one is. Yeah, I don't find this very readable at all, really, but that's fine. What about these other guys? Other people? Uh, return kind, okay. Yeah, he repeated himself. Okay. All right. Nothing too crazy there. I am going to call this done. And so today we have learned conditionals and comparisons. We have completed the vehicle purchase exercise. And next time I believe we'll get into increment and decrement. And we will look at bird watcher, which uh, should also handle for loops as well. So yeah, I don't know. We'll get into that tomorrow. Uh, that's it for today. Thanks a lot for watching. If you have any comments or feedback, please do let me know. Other than that, have a nice day, and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.